Hi guys, it's Heather. A few people have asked me to um, do a little video on my uh, mask creation process and I've changed it a few times and this is where I am at, at right now. So what I do is I use this template from Creative Grids um, and I have I think one more in my store but I can always get more if you um, want some. But it's nice because it's got a small, a medium, and a large. It's got um, a pleat marked if you want it on the side and it has um, seam allowances for you depending on how you make your mask. You might need those. Um, I do in some places, I don't in others. I basically just use this shape as it is though. So the first thing I do is I cut um, with the fabric a uh, six and a half inch strip for whatever colors I'm going to do. And then I take that six and a half inch strip and I cut it into seven inch pieces. And I use my stripology ruler for that and I, I can get um, six squares. Um, and I just find it easier to start with the squares. I could probably use less fabric if I was just using my cutter, but this way I can stack the squares. And that's what I do is I stack the squares all up together and then I put my, my template on and I cut it. So in this case, these are smalls. So I line up the corner here with the small. And if you don't have your square stacked perfectly, just, just cut a nice 90 degree corner there. And you can use this to even do that. Um, and then line this, line your small size up here with this. So that's step one. Um, and when I cut them, um, I will use my rotary cutter to cut this edge and this edge. And I will also use my rotary cutter to cut this edge because it does slide really nicely around that edge. But what I don't use my rotary cutter for is this edge. It's just way too hard to do that, that inside curve. So I will mark it and then I kind of pull the, let me set these down here a second so you can see. I pull back a little bit on my template because I want my template holding the fabric down and then I trim along with my rotary cutter along that edge. Um, so I'm still using my rotary cutter so I can still do more than one. If you don't leave anything on it and you just have them like this, the fabric does weird things. So you want some pressure on your fabric. You just don't want to be trimming right on this edge. Um, I did in the beginning and I've nicked it and it's rough and icky. Um, it just doesn't work well to do a rotary cutter on an inside curve like that. I'm going to pause the video and get set up for the next step that I will show you in a minute. So I should have mentioned that if you're using print fabrics, make sure that you are cutting them right sides together. Um, otherwise they won't, they won't match up right. So the first seam that you're going to sew is this one right here. This is the one that goes down the center of your nose. Um, and I do this, even though I use my serger for a lot of it, I do this on my traditional domestic sewing machine. Um, and we're going to try to do it. I'll get started right here and show you the very beginning and then I'll loop to the end. So I just do a quarter inch in and my foot has a quarter inch mark on the side. You can use um, the one with the little, the little edge, which is what I would normally use for piecing quilts. I don't use that for this because um, sometimes on these outer curves and stuff, I find it gets in the way. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this curve and then show you what I do next. Okay, so now I have three sets of insides and outsides. Um, one, one, two, three. So I, I like to do that because a bunch at once because it does give you an opportunity to do a little bit of assembly line motion. So the next thing that I'm going to do, this, these two pieces would be right sides together. You're going to flip them out and sew down this seam right here. But before I do that, because I like it to lay flat, I I trim this seam and so I do little tiny cuts in um, with a small scissors making sure not to cut my stitch right there. So here I'll go ahead and do those and then show you what that looks like. Okay so now I have trimmed both my inside and my outside and you can see I just did little cuts, little cuts. They're easier to see on the tan than they are on the red. And then what I'm going to do is flip these right side out. And this is a little bit harder to do left-handed, but I will get it. Okay. And then I will, for both of them, I'll pick a side, right or left, it doesn't matter, 
to finger press these the seam open and then I will sew a top stitch down it just to keep this pointing the same way all the way around so now you can see I have a mask that lays nice and flat like this it has that little top stitch seam on there if you want to be real fancy you can match your thread colors I just leave all mine white or gray or whatever I mean I have in there as long as it's kind of neutral but you can see those are that that seam is all kind of pressed over to one side now so when you finish assembling the mask this inside is actually going to be um, convex like this and then it'll match up with the, the outward um, angled one on the other side this is where you have some choices to make though now that you've kind of got your your top together you need to decide how you're going to do your ties I lately have been doing an elastic not elastic I'm sorry a jersey tie stretched across the top and the bottom all the way across um, and I, I give it a little bit of a stretch and it's it's folded up it gives it a nice little edge on top and it it provides a little stretch across the nose to keep it tight um, and then I have them come off the end and connect to a pony bead either to tie behind the head with an adjustable strap or around the ears with that adjustable pony bead if you want to um, use elastic you would probably um, do a channel here on the end um, you can also do something similar to the the t-shirt tie through a uh, hemmed channel here on the end um, since I'm not doing that channel I'm just going to hem mine and I am going to put this little um, tucker pleat in right here I usually just do one um, kind of in about this this spot and you can mark it or you can eyeball it but what I just do is I I just fold this over and give it one quick top stitch down you can fold it over twice um, if you want it to look really really neat and sharp um, if you intend on using a filter you're going to want to um, cut off part of this inside so this is my inside and so what you're going to want to do is cut off a chunk of it about this big um, and then do your hem and that's so that when it's together you have a little bit easier way to get that that um, filter pocket in so when the mask is completely done I will have a hemmed opening on this side sometimes I stitch them together sometimes I leave them completely open um, and then uh, I will have the mask will really be only sewn truly together at the top and the bottom I'm going to show you the t-shirt um, jersey across the top and the bottom uh, that's what I've been doing and I really like it this is not from t-shirts this is actually from yardage um, I have black and I have gray that I've been using. I really like the gray because it's cotton and it's soft. The black I got from Joann's and it's a matte polyester. I, it's fine. It's just not my favorite. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hem these. And then I'm going to get set up over on my serger to show you what I do here. I have a serger, so I went ahead and just serged mine. Um, I added the pleat. If you do the, the traditional hem... Um, remember to add your pleats. You can do it now, you can do it later. I just like to do it at this point um, because otherwise sometimes I kind of miss part of the bottom of the pleat, which is my lack of clothing sewing expertise um, more than anything else. So I have my front and my back ready to go um, and they will go with wrong sides together. So here's my back, here we go, curved up and my front is here. And if this is because I'm doing it on a serger. So if you are not using a serger, because see, I want both my finished sides out. If you're not using a serger, you're going to want to put these right sides together um, and sew them this way with the wrong sides facing out because you'll be turning it um, once you're done sewing. Give me a second to set up my um, t-shirt tie and I will show you the next step. So I'm going to real quickly show you what you would do if you are um, using a domestic sewing machine to finish this. So here I've got my right sides together and I'm using the flat bottom side just because it's simpler. What I've done is I've taken um, my width of fabric at an inch and a half thick and I cut that in half. So I have a top and a bottom from one width of, of the jersey. So I find the center of it. You don't have to be super precise. And that center is going to go on the center here. 
um, just for kind of easy measurement purposes. Okay, and you're going to want to pin, especially if you're using your domestic machine. Um, I don't on the serger because it's just a little bit different process and it's easier. So you're gonna take that and you're gonna fold it in half, hiding the purl side. So if you have you ever knit, you'll know that knit has a knit side and kind of a purl side and you want that purl side hiding in. And if you're not sure which is which, it's gonna roll onto the knit side. So that roll up is always under the knit. And you're gonna to wanna to pin it folded with your raw edge to the raw edge of your mask. And then you're going to want to add your um, other half of your mask on top and just pin all three of those layers together. I'm gonna to go ahead and sew this on my serger, which if you are going to do that, you're gonna to wanna to put, like I said earlier, your right sides facing out. And, yep, there's my right side facing out. And then on top of your front fabric, you're gonna to wanna to sew this to the raw edge. Um, and again, since it's in a serger, it's just a little bit easier to do without pinning because sergers don't love pins to begin with. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this and show you what that looks like. And I should have added that while you're pinning it or serging it, you wanna give that t-shirt a little bit of a tug because you want it to just like elastic would pull the mask into itself a little bit and give it some, some nice uh, tightness around the nose and around the chin when you're all done. One more little bit to add, and you can do this um, if you forget before adding the second one like I did. If you are not intending to have this used with a filter pocket, I like to sew my two layers together and I go right on top of my existing top stitch line. It just keeps those layers together on the nose and it helps keep them off of your nose and your mouth a little bit when you're wearing it. It just adds to that, that curve in the fabric. So see how I'm doing this here? I'm just making sure that this line gets sewn down real nice. You will want to top stitch over your seams um, if you did a turn and top stitch type of, of creation. Um, other than that, it will look identical, but I would definitely top stitch and you might, you probably want to clip your seams like we did here in the center before you turn it. So now I've done that on the top and the bottom. This is pretty much my finished mask. See, it's got this nice little bit of stretchy jersey there on the top and the bottom really cups the mask in nice and gives you a better fit around the nose without having to have a piece of metal or anything like that. Um, what I do next is I take these and if you want to tie them behind your head, I connect the top two. And if you want to connect them behind your ear, I connect on each side. And I use pony beads for that. And what I do is I just trim an angle here so that I have a nice narrow tip to, to put through that pony bead. Um, and then I pull the pony beads tight. I usually tie a knot and then trim off any excess tie. Um, around the ear, there's a lot of excess tie. If you're going around behind the head, I generally don't trim off anything. I hope that helped. Um, if you were not doing this, you still would have turned and top stitched or um, surged across the top. I have a few. Here's a baby one, um, but it surged across the top and I didn't I didn't use the jersey tie, so I will add a tie here to the edge for each of these um, because that's what the person wanted. And clearly I forgot to sew that side, but you get the picture. Um, I still did the center of the mask the same. Thanks.